Hey everybody, Eric here. Haven't done quite a lot of eight ball patterns lately. It's been quite a long time since I posted to my YouTube channel, but doing lots of other things. So I just figured I'd take some time today and I like to continue doing the eight ball pattern piece where I'm doing some commentary as I'm walking through everything. So I hope you enjoy it and let's get to work. So um, the biggest thing that we wanna make sure that we're doing is trying to make a ball in the break. So I'm gonna break head on, but I'm going to break a little to the right side of the table. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to force the 14 ball here, whatever ball is right here, I'm trying to force that ball into the side pocket. So that's the ball that I'm trying to make on the break. But regardless, we're gonna take ball in hand no matter what we do, just to talk about the patterns and how to get through them. So here we go. It looks pretty dry. Okay, so when we start talking about ball patterns, something that we want to make sure that we're discussing is the difference between what I call a problem ball and the difference between what I call a weird ball. A problem ball is something that's normally tied up. So if we take a look at the pool table, we're going to see that I got the 10 and the 2 that are next to each other, and I got the 6 and the 13 that are next to each other. So those are the things that I want to look at first. But in the event that there's no problem balls, I want to target what I call a weird ball. And a weird ball is normally something that uh, takes some cue ball movement to get to, a ball that takes cue ball movement. So when I look around here, I see where all the balls are. And my outlier, I believe, is the five ball. This is going to be the ball that I'm going to have to take some movement to to get somewhere over here or somewhere over here. And then after that I shoot that, I'm gonna to have to work my cue ball back towards the middle of the pool table to try to continue to get shape on anything. So the biggest thing that we have to distinguish after we find that is, well, what do we wanna shoot? So first thing I always tell people is that we wanna look at both suits. Just don't pick solids and go. Make sure you look at solids and make sure you look at stripes because if you don't look at stripes and you choose solids, you might have missed something that you might have noticed about three fourths of the way through your rack and now you're stuck. Then the other guy's gonna run out the rack that you should have ran out. So when I look here, we're gonna to try to identify the problems and how they can relate to the rest of the rack. So if I have ball in hand, I could start here and I could attack the six. I could bring the cue ball back and out. I could also come through the rails one, two, back out this way to where I can have shape on the one ball. I could have shape on the four ball if I do that. One of the things that we want to make sure that we're trying to do is trying to send the cue ball in the line to where it's going to give us the best opportunity for a shot. If I come through here and I don't hit it very well, notice that I'll be stuck on the rail. But if I come through this way, notice I'll be able to get out here. I could even shoot a combo if I wanted. So just know that that, that shot's available. So what we got to figure out now, if, if I like that six, since I'm talking about solids, let's move our way to the two ball. Is there a way that I can get the two ball out without being absolutely crazy? Okay, but also solids is what has our outlier. So the question we have to ask ourselves is do we really want to take solids? So before we make that decision, let's take a look at stripes. So stripes has the 13 ball tied up with the six. The 13 ball does not go here. The 10 ball does go up here, but it's just kind of sitting here tied up with the two ball we could get out of line on it if we're not careful. So if we have ball in hand and we want to attack solids, we could even put the six ball through here and we could come out. But the only way we can really attack stripes with ball in hand is if we really start with the 13 ball. We could start with the 14, we could roll up, but then we run into the risk of maybe hitting the six ball or something like that. And we wanna to try to keep the cue ball movement as simple as possible. So as I'm looking through here, I'm just gonna pick one. I'm gonna try to get out of stripes. In the event that I don't get out, I'm just gonna take ball in hand and we're gonna walk through how to get out of solids in its current condition. So I'm gonna start with the 13 ball. 13 ball is the one ball that I have an issue with. Now, the 13 ball will actually allow me to get shape on the 10. So that's not necessarily a bad idea, but as I travel the cue ball through this way, you'll also see that I have an opportunity to get shape on my nine, probably somewhere out in this area. 
So there's opportunity to keep us safe. It's a safe shot to shoot. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot the 13 in the corner. And my goal is to attack the 10 ball. I don't want that ball there. I don't want to have to play shape on it at all. So I'm going to come through here. I'm going to shoot this ball with high English. I'm just going to give it the angle to scoot out towards the rail. And I hope to hit the rail and I try to come out through here to where I'm going to be pretty strong on the 10 in the corner pocket. So let's check it out. Let's see if I can do it here. Give yourself an angle. Don't put the left hand English on the ball if you don't have to. We don't spin balls. We don't have to spin balls. So straight high, give yourself the angle, get used to shooting them. Okay, so we got a pretty good shot on the 10, which is good. So now we just want to we just want to think here. I mentioned the nine earlier, but we have to realize that the nine is pretty much available right now from anywhere. And also we could use this 14 to get shape on the nine ball. So what we want to think from here is if I shoot my 10 ball, because that's the ball that I really wanted to shoot, what's going to come of all these other balls? As you can see, I got really good on the 15. Okay? And this is a ball potentially that could be an issue because it's on the rail, but this window here is kind of tight to get into. So we just want to evaluate to make sure that the 10 ball is in fact the right ball that we want to play. And... From what I'm seeing here right now, we may want to make a change. I think the 15 ball is probably the ball that we really want to play because we got really good on it, and this is an opportunity to get a ball out of the way that could be problematic in the long run. So before we do, let's take a look to see if the 10 ball goes in any other pockets. So I'm just going to take a look down here to the pocket that I'm kind of sitting at. The 10 ball does go down here past the 9. Now that's good to know. Because now, in the event that we don't want to play shape on the 10 ball up here, we could bring the cue ball from where we're sitting currently out here to play the 10 ball. But I think we're going to be okay regardless. So I'm going to shoot the 15 ball. Now I'm just going to shoot it with draw. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm not going to hit it really hard. I'm going to put a touch of right on it too. Because when it comes off the rail, I don't want it to draw into these balls because the 10 goes. I want to draw behind the balls. So the draw is going to bring me this way. And then the right is going to help me stay on the underside of these balls. My goal is to get to the 11 ball next. If I hit it super good, I'm still going to get shape on the 10 and I'll still be able to play the 10 ball. But my goal is the 11. So let's check it out here. Low right hand English. Okay. You had to hit it super good to get it to come all the way back here. Now this isn't bad. I'm on the right side of the 11, and what the right side of the 11 means is I don't have to do anything crazy to get the cue ball to move. So it's, it's, I am on the right side, but we're on the correct side of the ball. That's a good term. So since I'm here now, as long as I shoot this ball, this cue ball wants to go this way. If I shot it with high, it still wants to go that way, but we don't want to do that. We want to try to keep the cue ball in the middle of the table. So I'm going to slide this cue ball this way. Okay, and I'm going to attempt to get shape on the 10 ball in the corner pocket. But I also know that if I hit it too hard, I've got the 12 ball that comes up here. I've got the 14 that's going to go down there. I've got plenty of options. So the big thing is, is you want to hit it nice and smooth. And you want to make sure that you're making the 11. Wherever it goes, we currently have a shot that we can play. So let's see here. Okay, so 10 ball it is. So as we're looking at the 10, I can also realize now, since I hit it anywhere, my nine ball is available and I don't have to worry about it. I can't shoot the 12 anymore. I can't shoot the 14 because the eight ball doesn't allow that. So I'm gonna shoot the nine ball because the nine ball has the biggest pocket. So I'm gonna, I'm on the left side of the nine. So in order to get shape on my next ball, which in this case I believe should be the 10 because we're getting towards that end of the rack here and now this ball still hasn't moved yet. Those balls are both available. So I'm gonna come through here, I'm gonna pocket the nine and I'm gonna shoot the cue ball with top left English. So after I hit the nine, the cue ball is gonna to wanna to drive through the rail here. And then this left hand English is gonna to wanna to take off on me and it's gonna to wanna to come through here. And then it's gonna to wanna to start to come this way to where I can get a good shot on my 10 ball. The thing we wanna make sure we're trying to do here is getting the cue ball off the rail. We don't wanna get stuck on the rail. So top left hand English here. Don't 
Don't get stuck on the rail. Okay, pretty good. All right, now we're on the incorrect side of the 10 ball. So that means I would have to fight to do absolutely any type of cue ball movement with it. So in order to try to save grace here, I'm just gonna shoot the 10 and I'm just gonna run into the two and take whatever's left. In most cases, I'm probably gonna have to shoot the 14 in this corner pocket next. And sometimes we just gotta be able to make a shot. So let's try to make the 10 ball here and see what we can leave ourselves. I am gonna put some high English on the ball to try to drive through it. My goal is to get like out here so I can shoot the 14 here and I can bring the cue ball across the pool table like this to get shape on the 12 ball. So let's see if I can make it. Okay, that worked pretty good. So we clip the two, we come just out here. Now the 14 ball is probably the toughest shot that we're gonna have on the table just because it's on the rail. We gotta settle down and make a ball. That's it, settle down and make one. Hit it with a little bit of force so the cue ball is able to come across the table to this rail and then back that way. Let's see what we got. Good shot. Okay, so now I got back on the correct side of the 12 ball. So now I'm going to try to finish out this rack by shooting the 12 in the corner. Okay, and bringing the cue ball this way. Uh, we'll take a look at it here. The eight ball does go in the corner here. So what that means is if, if, if I got straight in, I could just stop shot it and shoot it. But because I didn't, what I don't want to risk is hitting it and getting all the way back here. I don't want to have to shoot a shot that's back here. So I'm going to try to smooth it out. I'm going to try to come off the rail. I'm going to try to get to the middle of the table where I could shoot the eight ball in the same corner pocket that I'm going to shoot the 12. So let's see what happens here. Just like that. No worries there. Now, we did the hard part. Let's just make sure we make the easy one, all right? So we're just gonna pocket the eight ball in the corner pocket. We're gonna put some high English on the ball just so it drives towards the rail and we don't have to do absolutely anything with getting out of the rack. So here we go. Just make it. All right, so there you have it. There's an eight ball out with stripes, and I hope you enjoyed that. Sometimes we do have to change our minds. We're not perfect. We're not always gonna get on the right side of the ball. But the things that you have to remember here, we wanna stay in the center axis as much as possible. Top spin, center ball, draw. And when we're applying the right hand and the, low, uh, and the left hand English, what we really wanna make sure that we're doing is applying as only needed, as little as possible. If we have to get out all the way on the outside part of the ball, we're frustrated because we're out of line. We don't want to have to do that. So join me in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.